Building your own electric longboard was definitely my favorite DIY project so far. It taught me many things about electronics, but also to be patient, because you'll probably order the parts at different suppliers, and the delivery could vary. That was basically the only negative side of this project for me. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel, because I'm planning on upgrading my board and upload more videos on this subject in the near future. Here is a full list of all the parts I have used, also in the description. I used the longboard without the trucks and the wheels, because those are included with the single motor mechanical kit which also includes motor mount, wheel drive pulley, motor pulley and belt. For belt, I would suggest to order a few extra, because you'll need to replace it periodically. For motor, I use the Turnagy AeroDrive SK3 149 kV. As for speed controller, I use the VESC, which is very well known within the DIY electric longboard community. I used a couple of anti-spark switches of XT90 and for remote I used the winning W2 which I'm not really happy about but I'll discuss it later in the video. As for battery pack I used my own DIY battery containing two 5 cell batteries connected in series which makes a 10 cell battery. I'll discuss the battery later in the video but also I'll create a different video about uh, battery in which I'll discuss it more in depth. In order to charge the batteries you can use any RC battery charger. The IMAX B6 is a good example. I've also used a few plugs to connect the motor to the VESC, but you can also solder them directly to each other. And at least you'll need a few containers for the electronics. I'll suggest to separate the VESC from the batteries in order to protect each from each other. As for equipment, you'll need soldering iron, glue gun, screwdrivers, Allen keys and electric tape. To be honest, this is a health DIY project because I didn't make every part myself. At first I tried to make the motor mount myself, but for this you really need some serious metal processing equipment, which I didn't have, and even had a hard time to find someone who could do this for me. Eventually I was able to find a company who could make the pulley fit on the motor, but not to adjust the truck. That's why I ordered the single motor mechanical kit at DIYelectricskateboard.com which reduced the workload tremendously, because that's the most difficult part of this project. As you can see, assembling the mechanical kit is straightforward. At first assembly, I would suggest not to use Loctite, because you want to find a good position for your motor. Later, when you have set up everything accordingly, and you're sure about the motor position, you must apply Loctite on every screw, otherwise it will get loose with vibration on the road. attaching the drive wheel pulley you can immediately apply Loctite. It's also best to fasten the screws on the drive wheel pulley all at once and gradually. If you fasten each screw completely and then move to the next one, chances are good that the last few screws will not align and you'll need to start all over again. <laughs>
can either solder the motor cables directly to the VESC or use some kind of plug between them. It doesn't matter which cables on the motor are connected to which one on the VESC. But if the forward button on your remote makes the board go backwards, then you'll need to swap two of the cables. That is why using the plug is the best option, because it allows you to easily swap two cables which switches the direction of the motor. The VESC was delivered with the XT60 plug, which I replaced with the XT90. As mentioned before, it's best to separate the electronics in order to protect each when one causes problems. Like if the battery gets on fire, your expensive VESC will be safe. Use hot glue in order to secure the VESC and receiver in place. Otherwise, they would move too much during a ride and that could cause some damage. Now comes the part to connect the receiver to the VESC. You'll need to pay attention to the ground cable that decides the orientation of the cable. In this case, it's the brown cable. On the receiver, connect the binding plug to the top row, which says binding channel, and connect the VESC to the bottom row, which says channel 1. Pay attention to the orientation of the cable. The brown cable needs to be on the left side. The middle row remains unused. Connect the battery and wait a few seconds for VESC and receiver to power on. Then power on the remote while press and holding the bind button. On the remote there is a screw which you can use to adjust the throttle. Make sure you adjust this correctly, otherwise the board could start running by itself. I didn't have to program the VESC, but when I turn off the remote, the motor goes on full speed, which is a big issue when the battery on the remote goes down. I'll adjust this later. I 
I noticed my motor pulley keeps moving to the side and causing friction between the belt and the wheel. In order to fix this, I just applied some hot glue to the side of the motor pulley. As mentioned, I made the battery pack myself. It's a 10 cell battery made out of two 5 cell batteries connected in series. This doesn't give me much distance, but I'm working on a new battery pack using a BMS, a battery management system, which should give me three times the distance. Later I'll create a separate video only about the battery. Mm -hmm.